What an achievement. Prologue, Rise to Power. Chapter 1, President Reign. We are now President. And now the game starts. <laughs> oh, we have a map. Election promises as Anton Reign, that's us. Anton, Anton Reign. You have made many promises to the people of Swordland in order to gain their votes. They must be considered very carefully. Now we have to choose a couple of things. Shortland's economy had been based on a planned doctrine since its formation until the former president, Imbald Alfonso, enacted free market reforms. Now the country finds itself in between two different economical systems. So are we going to promote the free market or are we going to promote the planned economy? Planned economy is communists. Free market is almost everything else. Planned? Are we gonna go? Are we really gonna go the Soviet way? <laughs> I mean, if you would ask me now, I would immediately pick the free market. But uh... okay, let's do it. We are gonna promote a planned economy. The intensifying global rivalry between capitalists. Arcasia in the west and communist united Contana in the east is opening new diplomatic possibilities. Turtlet could take steps to align itself closer to one. Well, let's go with, with, with the communists, right, in the east. I mean, we can also stay on our own, but maybe we need friends. I think friends are uh, very, very helpful. So let's uh, try to ally with the, with the east. <laughs> Attack the other communists. And immigration? In recent years, Bludish, Wazak and Hagnolian immigrants flocked to Swordland due to relaxed immigration laws, enacted by Ewald Alfonso. As a result, tensions in between swords and immigrants have been increasing. Are we going to keep it relaxed or are we going to tighten immigration? Maybe we should go with the Titan immigration. Let's do this one. We are becoming a bit... Uh, we are. We will stay socialist, but we are also a bit strict. Term focus. We also have, prom uh, we have also promised to focus on a certain extent of subject within our first term. People expect us to solve the negative situations within this topic while providing an overall improvement to the related politics. Where are we going to focus on health, education, law and enforcement or military? Let's go sing education. I mean, education is very... It's, it's helpful because it makes people more aware. And if you can educate yourself, you can also make more money, maybe. Well, we have a planned economy, so I don't know how that works, but... Maybe we should go with education. I think education is good for a lot of things. Your promises will be remembered and they will have consequences. Are you sure about the, your decisions? No, but I will click yes. Okay, now we are in the game. Uh, two weeks have passed since we won the election. And now I was about to be sworn in as the fourth president of Swordland. Thousands were watching the inauguration ceremony and cheered my name. Anton Rain, that's us. The die was cast. The die was cast and there my story began. In the distance the Maroon Palace stood on top of the famous Hill of Pride. So I can click on these things and then I can see what it is. So the Maroon Palace is uh, where the government is situated. 
Then you get some background information about the whole storyline. And what is the Hill of Pride? Oh, it was named during the Declaration of the Kingdom. The Supreme Court is here, the Grand National Assembly is here. Okay. I looked at my family, my son, daughter, Frank. This is our son. Uh, he is currently studying at the Holzhard Markin High School and Deanna, this is my daughter. Um, she is in elementary school in Holzhard. And this is my wife, Monica. And she is the first lady now and she was born in Lackhaven. Lackhaven. Then I turned to watch the key people who made it all possible. Of course, each individual was promised an important position in my cabinet. As my thoughts slowly faded away, the reality of the situation dawned on me. Also Hawker, the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court was waiting for me. This is also Hawker. And okay. Now he's talking, the Chief Justice. Time for the oath has come. So we have to do the oath. I am ready, it has indeed, or let's start. I'm ready. Please repeat after me, I do solemnly swear. I do solemnly swear. That I will respectfully execute the office of the President of Swordland. And to the best of my ability, preserve, protect and defend the people and the constitution of the Republic of Swordland. So this is our flag apparently. Uh, the Republic of Swordland in Eastern Mercopia. So Eastern Mercopia is maybe more of a continent or something. And these are the countries around us. Rumburg, Magnolia, Wailen and Lesbia. You may now deliver your inauguration speech, Mr. President. It is an honor. How are we going to start it? Dear citizens of Swordland, or brothers and sisters, or my fellow swords? What should we do? Three, my fellow swords. The crowd looked, looked very eager to listen to me. The idea of, uni of unity. The current dire situation. Or we are going to talk about change and hope. Just to change and hope. Together we will bring prosperity and reform to our nation. It is a time of hope. It is a time of change. If we stand together, we prevail, or the issues that plagued us, or our capabilities. <coughs> uh, let's do two. We have insufficient infrastructure, houses without electricity, without water, we have crime in the streets, unemployment within the youth, and we still have injustice in the government that plagues us. Promise you we will stop the recession and eliminate poverty. The future awaits us time to turn our faces to the east. Turn our faces to the east. First we must rewrite our broken constitution from 1929. Let's stop the recession. It's time for a united and powerful Swordland once again. Change now, not in the next decade or years, today. Our capacity as a nation has never been greater. <laughs> Too late. Hmm. Let's do one. Hundreds of thousands cheered. They were shouting my name in unison. I felt the responsibility, the power and the burden at all, all at the same time. Am I going to raise my fist? Am I going to wave or am I going to enjoy the moment? <laughs> I 
raise the fist. <laughs> You're gonna be angry. No, I'm, I, I don't think I'm gonna be very warmongering. I think I'm just gonna enjoy the moment. I'm not gonna do anything. I took a long, I took a long look at the people of Sardin to burn this moment in my memory. One of the presidential guards came by to notify that it was time to leave. I made up my way to leading, to the leading car in the motorcade. The presidential state car was a jet black Cadillac with flags of Sortland above the front headlights. Next to it, a man was holding the door. Sergei. Hello, Mr. President. Still under the effect of the speech I made, hearing my new title made me smile. If you allow me to introduce you myself, I am Serge, your new driver. Nice to meet you. It's honor. He respectfully bowed his head before opening the car door. And gesturing inside, I entered the car. We'll be heading towards the palace. The motorcade began to move. On the way, Serge proceeded to explain his duties as a driver. As minutes passed by, I felt myself lost in thoughts again, barely paying attention to what he was saying. He suddenly made a gesture towards the now closer palace. Isn't it a beauty, the maroon palace? He was right. Sunlight glinted off the palace, many maroon colored dome. It was so bright that I had to look away. Every time I look at it, I am reminded of my duty to this nation. It's in good hands now, because we are president. So do I. It is the beating heart of the nation. Or we are all owe a great debt to the men who led the country from here. It's just a building, Serge. <laughs> it's just a building. Well, that's it's, <laughs> and of course, Aisko is saying four immediately. We all owe a great debt to the men who led the country from here. Yeah, well. <laughs> okay, <laughs> it's just a building search. You're right, Mr. President. I don't know much about architecture, but for me, it's the most beautiful building in all of Holsort. So, what's Holsort? Uh, I can click on go to location. Can I hide this? Yeah, this is whole sword, so... Can I scroll with WASD? Oh, yes, look at this. This is the map, and there's a radio here. What is this language? I have no idea. I think it's fake. Oh, this is Luck 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 Haven is over here. That is Dayer. We saw already, and Whole Sword is here, and you have some small towns. Okay. Also, there's the strong uh, beating heart, Swordland. At the center of this great city is the Capitol Park. All right. The car drove past the majestic gates, continued uphill to the entrance and stopped in front of the doors. Which got out of the car and opened the door for me. Have a great day, Mr. President. Amorkna Weskor. Okay. He referred to the famous Swordish phrase from the time of revolution. Amorkna Weskor Vecten Sisda. Which means morning will come, victory is close. What a weird language. Goodbye. I made my way upstairs through the extravagant corridors of the palace, marble and engraved wooden finishes decorated the interior. The footsteps echoed in the colossal halls. Guards bowed their heads in respect as I opened the massive doors to my new office. And now we are in the game. Now we have a couple of things we can click on. We have the economy here, economical development. No, a certain, we have three of ten stripes. I don't know what that means. Uh, the government has three budget. And we have two personal wealth. There is a news tab here. Let's click on the news. Mixed of Austrian and Italian. Yeah, and I think also a bit, a bit of German, that dialect. Because my dialect, some getting close to some of these words too. 
Okay, there are a couple of uh, newspapers. We have the whole sword post. Brain, that's us. Spoke of change and hope. I'm not going to read everything. Yeah. You just have to read yourself a bit, otherwise I don't have a voice anymore soon. A uh, new president has been sworn in by the USP, that's our party. You can click on all these blue things and see some background information. Mr. Hawker is the um, chief of the Supreme Court. He's the leader of the National Front Party. He was the runner-up. This is the People's Freedom and Justice Party. Right. Yeah. Okay. The Lack Haven Times, that's this city over here. Uh, with, with the port. Yeah, also here we are elected. 37%. He is. Uh, this party is third, and Franz Richter's party is second with 20%. The Communist Party of Sortland and the Works Party of Bludia both won just below 10% of the vote, failing to pass the 10% election threshold. So we do not have these. Uh, parties right now. The new term begins with the opposition of this party, National Front, under our USP government. So we have 130 seats. And the, the People's Freedom and Justice Party has 70, and the National Front Party is having 40. And some independents. Radical. <laughs> How many times will people fall for the same trap? We've seen this before with Colonel Sol, who supposed saved his country and brought stability in times. Very skeptical, this one. We have the economists. Structure in the infrastructure. Well. Alright. Anti solonomics. Okay, uh, we have the codex here, and uh, that is this thing, and then we can just uh, go through all these pages. Oh my god, we have so many people. My wife, my children, party leaders. Communist party. And it's all about, all about these backgrounds of these people. Crazy. We have the assembly. Supreme Court. Foreign leaders. Martin van Horten. Are there Dutch in this game? State figures. And others. Okay. There's a timeline. Even. Uh, there's even background information about the migration in the, the years 300 and 695. That's crazy. So much information. Wow. Okay. That's the codex and we have a journal. Okay, so we are now in turn one apparently. I don't know how we can see this, but uh, we won the election. A new chapter begins. Let's have a look over the map here. So, um, Room, Roomborg is a different country, I think. The Kingdom of Roomborg. In the cold north of Mercopia, yeah. So, Mercopia is our continent. We can see their population and their GDPs. They have an overwhelming military and we have bad relations with them. Ooh. What was their, what was their uh, fear God and honor the queen? Uh, okay. 
Then we have Agnolia. And this is very Dutch. Staalpoort, uh, Holten, Gilbertdam, Niels. Uh, Republic des Agnolia. Read the report from Agnolia. So we, we get some congratulations from uh, the Prime Minister van Horten. So the Prime Minister of this country. Um, congratulated us on our elections and he praised our party's stance on just transparent elections. He signaled his wishes to continue the trade partnership between our countries. Okay, so they they somewhat like us. Gelb is, is yellow in German, so but this is a bit German-Dutch-ish country. Heliopoort. What is this? We have the Democratische Republiek. Oh, he also congratulated me. Uh, but what is this country? What does that sound? It's an island nation and a major naval power to be reckoned with. Okay. We are neutral. This country here. Oh look, we have books here. Can I zoom out further now? Candle. And what is this? Statue. Republic de Zortland. So what do we have as well? We have um, uh, Lesbia over here. Canari, San Montagna. Is this a bit Italian? Perla, Palenco, yeah, it sounds a little bit Italian. Repubblico de Lesbia. Alvarez, so it's a bit more uh, a bit more Latin, Italian, Spanish country. And they also congratulated us, so I think we have some good relations and neutral. Wealthy country. Alright. What is this? Whalen. Respublik of Wellen. That looks a bit like uh, Slavic. Zizek. Jastsa. They also have a congratulations. And are they happy with me? Neutral. Wellen is a fragile country in the mountainous areas of western Macopia. It's widely known to be the origin of Nurity religion. Contains many important shrines. They are very hospital, despite their low living standard. Okay. And we have something here as well. Oh, that was a room work. So room work goes all over here. And the rest is all mine. So these are all states, I think. Rooney, uh, Loren, Holsort, Gelsland. Bergia, Nargis, and Akenland. I think that is all part of our uh, country. Yeah. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven states. Now we still have some, uh, some exclamation marks on these cities, so let's click on these. What is over here? Low production. There's low production in Agenland. Um, not, not going very well over here. Uh, we have a report, lack of investment. The mayor of Arvori, which is this one, right? Yeah, and now, now I clicked it away. Yikes. Uh, we have a report in Lakhaven. We lose importance of our of our Lakhaven port. That's not good. So maybe we have to do something about that as well. And I think the last thing to click on is this one. Uh, logistical logistical issues. 
in whole sort. Yeah. And what is this? General staff gathers. The general staff con convened right after the election to congratulate our victory. All branches of the Swedish Armed Force were presented in the meeting. SAF. It took place at Camp Strongar. Nice name. The Chief of the Armed Force, Falcon Kruger, made a public press statement highlighting the increasing chances of military confrontation in eastern Maricopia and requested support to strengthen the military. Right. And now we have a briefing. Peter Vecton arrived a couple of minutes early and sat across from me. He was struggling to hold back his smile. So this is our friend from school. Who is now our, our, our second guy. Uh, we did it until we won. Finally, all those years with our noses to the grindstone paid off. Enjoying uh, the new secretary I picked out for you? Wait, what? Enjoying the new secretary I picked out for you? Thought you appreciate her gorgeous set of talents? It's a shame the rest of your staff aren't as easy on the eyes. Who is this guy? <laughs> he gets you to the slight pounce that protruded over his waistband. But hey, back in university, did you ever imagine we would be sitting here in the Maroon Palace? We've been celebrating this great victory. Um, so we can celebrate now and we can uh, drink something. Or we're going to celebrate in the inaugural ball. Or this is not the time to celebrate. We're going to go with two. Let's celebrate uh, later. Looking forward to it. Evelyn hopes to congratulate you in person. I think Evelyn is his girlfriend or wife. Good to know. It's been some time since the last time I saw her. I'm sure the kids would love to see your Uncle Peter for the first time as the vice president. We will see each other at the ball then. And let's do two. That's great to hear. It's crazy how fast the two have grown up. You are a good father. Thank you very much. He had a wistful look in his eyes. He and Evelyn had never been able to have kids of their own. Oh. During our campaign, the opposition had floated the rumor that he'd fathered illegitimate children during his wilder years, but it had never been substantiated. The door swung open and Lucian Gallade... Right. Uh, he's my chief strategist, walked in. He was a compact man with sharp, bird-like features. After briefly surveying the room from wall to wall, he sat down, poured a glass of water and opened his briefcase. Gentlemen. Bell case clock in the room struck three o'clock. Damn, you are exactly on time, is Peter saying. Hello, Peter. Lucian then turned towards me. He very slightly bowed his head. I can say, glad to see you. Lucian, how are you? Say, glad to see you. It's a privilege to be here, sir. Uh, yeah. We will start meeting by evaluating the current situation. The majority of the Swedish people demand change. They are more concerned about the economy than the constitution, but they blame the system for their problems. People are losing their trust in our democracy. This frustration even causes some to reason with figures like Bernard Circas. Who is that? He's a poet. Expected that we bring the chains. The last government did not. Prince Richter, leader of the reformists, believes that true change can only be done by transferring some of our powers to the assembly. I will move into the details on their demands shortly. Um, I think I can agree with this. We need to listen to the people who want to, ser to serve this country. If we lose power as the government, we won't be able to execute necessary changes for the good of our country. Yeah, let's, let's do more democracy.
That's exactly what we campaigned for, a true chance for the country to move forward. We will need many allies against the old guards in the government. Mr. Richter managed to influence many members of assembly to give their support for drafting a new constitution. Reformist politicians are quickly increasing in number. While the reformist wing inside our party is still a minority, they could have a tripartisan majority in the assembly, especially if they unite under Franz Richter. This guy. USP reformers aren't wrong to agree that we need change, but we should be in charge. Mr. Richter could be a potential ally in our goal to maintain the majority in the assembly. The party must fall in line with precision. In the near future, we can't have a strong divide. But it all makes sense, right? Hey, Eterno! You like this game? There's so much to read out. Yeah, I, I don't think I'm going to read everything. Um, so what should we do? Which yet? If we do the USP reforms aren't wrong, we agree that we need change, but we should be in charge. That mean, makes sense, right? Party must fall in line with our position in the near future. We can't have a strong divide. That also makes sense. Let's do this one. Can't let the F the PFJP, the People's Freedom and Justice Party leadership, take the spotlight on this. Reformists' demand are are clear. They want to limit the president's veto powers, ensure that the Supreme Court is independent, and take away their right to vote on constitutional amendments. Sounds like something I can do. I support the reformists. We need a proper balance of power in this country. Or two, we must listen to their demands, otherwise we are no different than the previous administration. Or three, three, I won't allow them to influence me. I think I'm gonna go with one. I agree. It's better not to go against the wind of change that is raging around the country at this moment. My plan if I continue my stream run is to get a couple of people together to read different characters. <laughs> That sounds amazing. The old guards will do their best to preserve the constitution. Chief Justice Hawker. He's, oh yeah, he was the chief of the Supreme Court. And his allies, allied judges have a great influence over the Supreme Court. Yeah, we have to try to do something against it. The court, Supreme Court, also has an abrupt power over constitutional legislation. Without their approval, we cannot even change it. Yeah, I don't think the Supreme Court should have any anything to say about that, really. Uh, we, need, we need a comprehensive bill to balance the power structure more fairly. Let's break the power of the Supreme Court one way or another. Oh, let's go with the balance. I agree, the old guard won't like this though. Yeah. Comprehensive reform that would make reformers happy would mean maintaining a balance between all branches of the government. This means removing your absolute veto as well. Reformists demand the loopholes in the constitution to be fixed. So we have a, we have a veto right now, but we are going to get rid of it. But it makes sense. I don't think I want to become a dictator. I mean, we have a, plan, a, a planned economy, but we don't have to be a dictator. Look like we have many challenges ahead. Yes. We cannot allow obstructionists to exist, or we can't underestimate the situation. Well, one. You figured out, our party still holds 130 out of 250 seats in the assembly, that is power. That's true. However, to reform the constitution we must receive a two-thirds majority in the Grand National Assembly, which is 166 votes. and. A simple majority in the Supreme Court that equates to six votes. Okay. 
So there are 11 seats in the Supreme Court and two thirds. So we have two uh, two thirds of one two hundred and fifty is one hundred and sixty six. Uh, I can't calculate. I'm sorry. After we have settled our thoughts on how to proceed, we will need to talk with our party figures. First goal must be to get the 150 signatures needed to start the process. Following the green light from the USB, we will reach out to the other party leaders to see if they would back our draft. And then the last step is to convince the justices of the court. And they are gonna, of course, say no, and then we have to give them something or whatever. The entire process will take a long time, but we must start working with a reform committee, evaluate all possibilities for a new constitution as soon as possible. New constitution to give the president wide-ranging powers to lead Sortland into the future. Let's go with the reformists. This is what we've been preparing internally. People elected us because of a promise for diplomatic reforms. The key thing here will be strengthening the power of the assembly, which we already lead with majority. Yes, the divisions of power need to be rebalanced for a better Sortland. According to the initial draft we made with the reformists, there are two changes in the constitution that are not open for their discussion. Uh, the Supreme Court will no longer vote on constitutional amendments, okay? Second, the President's absolute veto will be taken away. This can be replaced with a limited veto system by fixing the current loopholes. That's fine. Yes. We will form a reform committee together with all parties and start reaching out to all the stakeholders in the Assembly and the Court for a new constitution. More information about the request parties inform later this year. Notes. And another important is that you must be aware of the Lotharberg group. Okay. Oh, these are oligarchs, so they have a lot of money. Elites. They call them elites, but they just have a, uh, that means that they have money. That then you are an elite, apparently. Um, yeah, okay. According to reports, some members of the National Business Council are in their pocket. Okay, they they might want to work with us. They will surely try to bribe us for their special economic interests. Oh god. I want to work with them anyway. The new administration will be open to talk to business people. I won't be bought. It won't happen. Or I will enter a dialogue with them eventually. We need to be diplomatic. Before we won't let these privileged, greedy and snobby capitalists run the country. <laughs> What are we going to do, guys? I mean, you can always talk with people, right? I think I'm gonna, just going to go with one. Aisko is saying three. Yeah, dialogue. Need to be diplomatic. Let's go with, with three. Wise approach, it's good to understand and see if we can reach a middle ground. As far as I know, Marcel Coronti... ...has some strong ties to this group, and we may try using his influence if we deem it necessary. He will want something from us for sure. So he is a... Uh, I mean, he, he operates the HOS, the heart of Sortland. The, f the four largest companies in Sortland. Also with media. 
Uh, yeah, it can become in handy. They are an important force, one that we should use to our administration's advantage. That group is dependent on our economic policies. They can't move a finger without us. Or Tusk is heading the group. We should make sure he is on our side. Yeah, but if we cannot get the leader of the group on our side, maybe we can uh, get some of the group on our side, but not the leader. What does semi-blind mean? Um, I have seen one hour of gameplay, I think. Maybe one and a half hours. And then I don't know what's coming. <laughs> we should make Swordland great again. <laughs> What are we going to pick here? Let's do one. Just be careful with him. It looks like the lesser evil, but it can quickly turn around to be the other way. Need to treat, need to treat or tread, tread carefully on all sides with all power players to survive our turn. I need to underline the seriousness of the situation. The military and the general staff is a powerful element in the state. And this history tells us a dangerous one too. There's some wiggle room to make surgical changes like reducing their budget. It is limited. I want to receive the advice of the military before making up my mind. I don't want to die in prison just like Arthur S. Whiskey did. What? With the Roomburg threat on the horizon, or oh, that is that country in the north, uh, we can't reduce our defense capability and anchor our general staff. Well, that makes sense. Winter has been nothing but a burden on our society. Drastic change like a reduction of funds is needed. What should we pick? I think 3 makes more sense right now. Why would you reduce it when there is a threat? Maybe you can do something against the threat and then reduce it. Yeah. I would advise the same. The budget should be maintained and we should refrain from confronting the military too directly. Yeah, we should not confront everyone at the same time. Defense Minister Josef Lancea. Look at this guy's face! <laughs> oh my god! Really? Defense Minister, he is more loyal than us than General Kruger. Effects <laughs> that obviously can change with our actions. Either way, I see a potential rift between the two since they are clearly from. Of different minds. Okay. Maybe we can take one of the two on our side. If we act strongly against the military, the two will unite against us. I agree with Lucian. We need to tread carefully with the military. Let's try to get this guy on our side then. That was 30 minutes. Includes our political briefing. Bye bye. Bye bye. And bye bye. More news. Toria Tori. I'm not going to read all these things. I'm just going to read the uh, the dialogues because I already feel that my voice is getting worse. Finance bill. There is a national league starting. Rumbor coming south. So that is the aggressive country. They are going to threaten Wailen and Agnolia.
So there will be a war then, I think. So Valen and Agnolia. This is Agnolia. Looks a bit German Dutch is. Agenland, I guess that's Agnolia. Okay. Uh, we have something in Deir. Increasing hopelessness in this uh, in Bergia. Twenty five percent of the people are homeless. <coughs> Excuse me. That is a lot. Wow. It's not going good here. And I think that's everything I can see. Then we go back here again. A report, public opinion. Okay, people are supporting the reformist ideas, so that's good. Uh, we have a meeting on the media strategy. There's Lucian again, our strategic advisor, chief strategist. And Peter is with us again. Uh, so Marcel Coronti has contacted uh, Lucian. The richest and most influential families in Swordland. He's the oldest son of Conrad Coronti, the industrialist and media mogul, founded the HOS, the heart of, the heart of Sundland. Alright. Lucian turned to me. He has offered to meet you with you, President. But uh, why is he sending his son? Why is he not coming himself? Oh! He is dead, so his dad died and now he is the, the chief. Okay. They are a powerful and influential media conglomerate to start with. They own the Swordland Today newspaper and the Broadcasting Corporation means it would be wise to have them on by our side. Sorry for interrupting. What does this productive collaboration entail? I did not wish to explain the details over the phone, but rather in person. I believe I will be receiving a call from him sometime soon. Okay. They have a lot of power. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. First, we need to determine the general approach. Yes. Two ways we can approach the media. One of them is by influencing it, which has clear advantages, and the other one is keeping it independent. Ooh, this is getting scary. From what I played, Agnolia is kind of Belgium, Poland. Buffer state. Are we going to use the media for ourselves? Or are we going to keep them independent? One or two. I mean, if I had to choose, it will be one. Of course, Isco is saying two. <laughs> Esco wants to be a dictator. Well. Can't click it. And Lucian is agreeing. Media plays a huge role in adapting public opinion towards our views and policies. Well, I do acknowledge that this will sound a bit harsh. You're Stalin. I certainly believe that we possess the perspective, knowledge and experience to have the superior judgment compared to a normal citizen living his daily life. Of 
Well, is it? Well, not really, but. See what you're getting at. Isn't there other way to avoid these issues? We can always hope for the best. Do we really think that nothing can go wrong? Especially considering the near-term history of Sortland. Two knocks were heard on the door. Please come in. It's uh, Livia Suno. My new secretary entered the office. Yes, excuse me, Mr. President. Mr. Galad, secretary, has been calling me and wanted me to relay a message. Marcel Coronti, the new CEO, is on the line. Well, the ball is in our court now. Would you like to talk to him, sir, or would you like me to? Um, I will talk to him. Pick up the phone. The president speaking. Or it's a pleasure, Mr. Coronti. Or hello, Marcel. <laughs> now, let's do it's, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure, Mr. Coronti. The pleasure is all mine. I know your time is valuable, so I will not waste any of it. I was just elected to be the CEO of the Heart of Sundland. I said, my strategy is the running of this conglomerate. Wow, these words. It will be different than my father's approach. This is why I'm offering a partnership deal regarding our media branch. I would like to formally invite you to my resort near Conriad. The third largest city in Greater Holsworth region. For a meeting. Uh, what does that entail? Our future as partners, Mr. President. Surely we can't talk about details on the phone. I just wish to have a face to face conversation. I'll send you the details through my secretary if you are interested. Should we go with it? I mean, he is the he is the CEO over over one of the biggest uh, media outlets there. That will really help to uh, keep to stay in power. I think I'm gonna go for the meeting. Yeah, and uh, goodbye. I said things up right away. Expect a worthwhile meeting next month. It's settled then. Looking forward to meeting next month. Good work, and muscle. Keep it up. You were getting already getting the attention of the key and potentially dangerous figures. Uh oh. Codex entry updated. Marcel Coronti. Oh yeah, these things are now updating. Okay. A tall couldn't hurt, right? No, because nothing goes wrong when you are talking with someone that has one hundreds of billions of uh, dollars and invites you to a big mansion. Yeah. Okay, let's take a look at the news. Oh, yeah, it's about the passing away of Kondraff and now Marshall is the leader. Yeah, what do these things about Sortland do? True. Is our island? I don't think so. Uh, I think we only have an exclamation mark on the capital, so let's click on it again. Oh, we have a campaign finance bill. Sign or veto the electoral campaign finance bill that was approved by the Grand National Assembly. We can use our veto right now. 
The criteria of the allocation of public funds shall no longer be according to the number of votes won in general election by a political party. The new criteria shall be the proportion of seats won by a political party in the assembly. Political parties shall receive an annual amount of 500,000 rand per member of assembly. This results in a doubling for the USP election budget and a slight increase in the other parties in the assembly while effectively removing all funding from parties that are below the 10% election threshold. Okay, Isco, see you next time. Thanks for joining. I mean, it is already made by, by, by the grant, how was it called? National Assembly, so I'm just going to sign it. I mean, they also get more money, so... Sure. <laughs>